This hack tip is brought to you by Thrillist. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down the concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Darren Kitchen, and today we're continuing our discussion on wireless management frames with probe requests and responses. And as you recall, we've set up a test environment using two wireless interfaces, Airbase NG and Wireshark, that's allowed us to inspect management frames. And we've looked at the beacons, our friendly little frames that broadcast the existence of wireless network. And today, we're going to take a little bit further and look at the probes. Now, probes come in two flavors, requests and responses. So we're going to go ahead and begin with the requests. A probe request is a special frame sent from a client station requesting information from either a specific access point or uh, all access points in the area specified with either an SSID or the broadcast SSID. Now, the information being requested in a probe includes information such as data rates, which also are included in these beacon frames that we've talked about that are just broadcast from the access point. The difference here being that by sending a probe request, your wireless card is making an active scan of either a specific network or all networks in an area, whereas simply listening for beacon frames is considered a passive scan. Now today we'll demonstrate an active and passive scan and dissect probe requests and responses. So this brings us to the responses. Uh, typically when an access point hears a probe request frame, either directed specifically to it or to all stations using the broadcast SSID, it's gonna go ahead and send out a probe response. And similar to a beacon frame, we'll find that the probe responses contain much of the same information required for two stations to start communicating. Now, to begin our demo, we're going to go ahead and start once again by bringing up our fake access point with Airbase NG. So let's start by bringing up the interface with if config, oops, WLAN zero up. Okay, now we're going to also go ahead and start it in monitor mode on channel 11 with Airmon NG start WLAN zero uh, 11. All right, and there we go, we have mon zero. So now we can go ahead and issue airbase ng, tac c11 for channel 11, tac e, we're gonna call it hack tip, that's our SSID in this case, and our interface mon zero. Now, with the access point up, we're gonna go ahead and fire up our favorite packet sniffer, Wireshark, and inspect both active and passive scans. Then we're gonna go ahead and wrap up with this week's giveaway, but first, let's take a quick break. Thrillist sifts through the crap to find the best your city has to offer every day. Want to know about a Star Wars burlesque show? A beer garden that screens 80s flicks? Or how about a restaurant with a sushi robot? Then sign up for Thrillist's free daily email at thrillist.com slash H-A-K-5. So to recap our configuration, we have our first radio in monitor mode with interface MON0, and it's acting as our access point or base station with Airbase NG. Now we're gonna go ahead and bring up a second wireless card in monitor mode. So let's do that in a new window here with Airmon TAC NG start WLAN 4 in this case, which is my little radio right here. Um, and I'm gonna put that on channel 11. It's not gonna matter for right now, but there we go. Now we have, in just a second, Mon1. Great. Um, and that's gonna be our new interface and it's going to be basically acting as our client or station. Now we go ahead and fire up Wireshark. We can go ahead and begin sniffing our client Mon1 and then we can see all of the packets and frames going on in the air for this card. So I'm just gonna click right here where it says Mon1. And already immediately we can see that there are plenty of beacons in the air as we've discussed in previous sessions. So let's go ahead and filter those out. And you know, while we're doing this, let's also filter out any frame that isn't addressed to or from our interface. So first we need to know the MAC address of our interface. So if config WLAN4, here is our hardware address. I'm gonna just select that, copy that. All right, cool. And now to filter this, we're gonna say WLAN.ADDR equals equals and then our MAC address and we're also going to go ahead and filter out the subtype 0x08 as we rem remember from the previous time those being our beacons. So amp amp wlan.fc.type underscore subtype not equal to so bang equal 0x08 whoops 
0x08. There we go. Now in our terminal, let's go ahead and tell our client card to do a passive scan of the area, looking for the available access points. So we'll issue IWDevWLAN4 scan passive, and then we'll pipe that to grep and look for just SSID. Go ahead and run that, it'll take just a second. And there we go. We see that we have plenty of SSIDs. And if we go back to Wireshark, I'll tab over to that, we can see that there aren't any probes or responses. And this is because our client card is reporting all of the nearby wireless networks based on a passive scan, meaning that no data was sent out. Our card was completely silent, and the data compiled was done so only using what was available freely in the air. And in this case, those are the beacon frames. Now, we can and probably will get more sophisticated with the, this type of silent site survey, if you will, with the tool Kismet, but for now, this should suffice in demonstrating what is available without transmitting a single frame. So finally, let's go ahead and generate some probes. And back in the terminal, let's all tab over to here, let's go ahead and tell our client card to make an active scan of the area. So IW list, WLAN4 scan, and again, grep, and then this time it's ESSID. And there we go, so we see that there's a slight difference in what shows up when we do the active versus passive in our terminal here, but if we head back over to Wireshark, we'll see that there are plenty of probe requests and probe responses. So let's go ahead and take a uh, look at the first request frame. So we can actually filter this. So it's um, 0x04 is the subtype. So I'm gonna put right at the end here in our filter, amp amp. And then we're going to say uh, type, I'm sorry, wlan.fc.type underscore subtype equals equals and we're going to look for 0x04. Okay and now we can see here that um, we have our first probe right here. It says probe request. Let's open that up and take a look inside. Okay and we can see it's a probe request. We can see that it is 0x04 as I just mentioned and we see here is our source. It's the MAC address of our card as well as the destination and that destination address broadcasts or FF, 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 meaning this is a probe request meant for everyone, anyone who can hear it. All right. And we actually can come down here into our tagged parameters. We can see our supported data rates. We can see, you know, what channel it's on. This one right here, current channel is one. So if we come back over here and take a look at our next one, and we can actually just do this right here and scroll all the way down, we can see this one is set to channel two. As you can imagine, the next one is set to channel three, the next one is set to channel four, and so on and so on. Now, if we go ahead and flip that last bit of our filter from subtype 0x04 or probe request to 0x05, we'll actually see the probe responses. So let me come up here and come all the way to the end, change that to a five, and here are the probe responses. Let me go ahead and uh, yeah, this one actually is hack tip. So let me open this one up and let's take a look inside. Now, as much like before, when we've looked at beacons, these frames indicate the same kind of capability information uh, necessary for our stations to be in, begin communicating. So we can see all sorts of uh, data in here as far as uh, what is available, the fixed parameters, including you know that WEP is not enabled. We've got um, under the tag parameters, the SSID tag tip, as well as the supported data rates and the channels and all of that other information that begin the first steps in our access point and our client communicating. Now, all right, I think that's plenty for this lesson today and coming up, we're going to be taking this further, analyzing the process of authentication and association, as well as all of the other fun stuff that makes up a station-based station relationship, right? Okay, but now it's time for the giveaway. Now, as you guys remember last week, I asked what was Wireshark known as before May of 2006? And that answer is ethereal, or ethereal, or ethereal, one of those. Anyway, this week, what I'd like to know is what Wireshark filter will specify whether a wireless frame check sequence is good or bad? Go ahead and answer in the comments to be randomly selected to receive the radio I use here on Hack Tip. And as always, we value your feedback and your suggestions. So if you have a tip, go ahead and share it with me. Email tips at hack5.org or just leave them right down here in the comments. And be sure to check out our sister show, Hack 5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there 
reminding you to trust your Technolust. In Soviet Russia, probe requests you.